video off. Um, and that because you will be part of the main recording and we've been we've been seeing that a couple times when video is not turned off. Uh, you will please stay on mute. If you're not on mute, we will uh, place you on mute. Uh, please use your, the chat box to ask questions or make comments at any point during uh, the presentation. And uh, if you are unable to see or hear the presenter, let me, the moderator, know in the chat box. Uh, it's I try to get I try to help out everyone as much as I can there. So we, it's really important that you can hear us properly. A lot of the times, it's a headphones issue. Maybe it's not picking up your headphones or a speaker. So double check the three dots in the center. Um, so in the toolbar, you have the video, the audio, and then you have a little the little chat box. But before the chat box, there's three little dots, and you can usually find the settings in there if there's an issue. Um, we will be recording today. Uh, at the top, you'll see the privacy policy and the dismiss button. You could dismiss that little uh, part up there so you can see the screen a little bit better. And yeah, with that, uh, I would like to introduce... Jody Williams, our Indigenous Education Lead, and Taya Hande Miller to uh, talk to us about the importance of the opening address and uh, the importance of it to, you know, as, as Taya Hande talks about the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the meaning behind that and the importance. Okay, thank you very much, Jody. You're oh, okay. I already talked, but I'm <laughs> on to Taya Hande. <laughs> Uh, greetings, everyone. Um, Day 108 New York Sonoda, um, Oswego and Sinu Tkidero, Waganyata, Dana Waganyat Kahaga. So I'm known in my community as Day and, and I'm uh, living in Six Nations or on Six Nations, and I'm Turtle Clan and I'm of the Mohawk persuasion. And so today, um, I would like to talk about the uh, common connections uh, that we have and uh, furthermore the um, uh, uh, I, I need to speak a few words in the language first and just to align our energies so if you'll bear with me and I'll give you a short uh, interpretation of that in a moment. So what do I see? Was got the guy who asked, "Then it's in a hold on some guy we need to go in a dam. Then it got to jump on Jade. What guy I see that on the rock? Then it's in a you got tahine. Oh, when he said that, then ne ne, it he needs to jump on Jade. It's in a way. Um, yagwes. Then I got to you got a dog. No good deeds in a hold. I go go in a hold. Yeah, when it he needs to jump on Jade. It when I and the one when I hear that, then I go out and go on a sewer. Dietina Guardado, Dana Wagon, the Hold Yahweh. Dietina Dog and I go out and go on. Sat we hear that, it got on Yade, a Wagon Hold Yunhe. Nene, Oliva Wagons in EOT was what got one in a got on Yage. Dietina Guardado, Nene, the new Aguago, a Sego, you did Daje, you not got one hundred now, the Sat Stomser. Nungidi, eight to eight, no one did, and a horado negaro yak geka. Tight to eight to a gawat negora. Nay nua, and the wadi wat nega, nay in dium kiadadum, and I in kiata nostade. Nay I do one who do go and go out to go for a sewer. Nay I go di payena. Nay it out a unguage ruhase. Nungidi, eight to eight, no, I eat in your heze, nene on gaguano hage. Nene uh on what do kasike, then I go out and go rat so ne only nung over the ane, ne gana no quatra and the wat white nun yat de tonito again a go on go on. Row in a dam, the chidwanu huelado, nene jinahodi ni huyera, got a job on jade, dano tkaru yade, tai tonigawan again, dana on eight to in our way, um that's a really concise um grouping of words that we do and we call this the Ahondigari Wadekwa is the first words that are spoken and these words are spoken anytime we gather more than two people together to discuss anything or to meet in any any way shape or form and this is kind of like 
like a unique experience here where we're everyone at this moment is listening to these words and these words are to help us to leave all of those things behind us uh, as as if we just came through a door just came through this doorway into this world that we're going to look at with a different perspective and this perspective allows us to align our energy with the greater energy that surrounds us. And um, the first thing that we do is we direct our energy towards the people. And so the people are very, very important because they were the last in creation to be brought in. So there had to be a lot of understanding going on and that understanding is all about how we're all connected. Everything is connected because everything is alive and we're all part of this living entity, although it looks different in, and depending on where you're standing and how you observe it and how you understand it. And so this connects us with all the things, firstly, what is here on earth. When we talk about our mother, uh, our, uh, the earth as being our mother because everything that she has is kind of like how a mother would look after its um, her children. So that that's that relationship, that's that bond that that happens. So just like we wouldn't hurt our mother, we don't want to hurt anything. As a matter of fact, we want to honor everything that is here on earth because that's our mother that's providing all of these things. And so when we say we send our energy out to all of these things here that have been collected on earth, and we include everything, all the things that are growing, all the things that are obviously alive, the animals, the birds, the trees, and all of those things all working together for our benefit. And for all of those things here on earth, we say we appreciate this. We give honor, love, and respect. And we do everything that we can to keep that energy strong. And this is the way our minds are to me. Then we move our minds away from the earth and we look into the sky world. And in the sky world, we're uh, constantly amazed at all the things that we seem to be um, they're a little bit more abstract because we can't actually touch them. We can see things that are in the sky, but we can't physically, um, or shall we say, physically feel it the way we do um, a regular um, three-dimensional object. So it's a little bit more abstract. But the fact is, all of those things that were created, this entire cosmos, the way it is, the way it is right now, reminds us that all of these energies are all going on at the same time and they're all affecting us in one way, shape or form. So we have the obvious ones like the sun and the moon are our closest <clears throat> relatives that we can um, realize and then the stars a little bit further out. All of them have received their own energies and they affect us. So to all of these entities that are out there, we say greetings, love and respect because you're continuing to do the duties that you have and we really appreciate that. So this is where we send our respect and our love. And in the sky world also, there are all these other energies. Uh, we call them our protectors or our guardians. And these energies are the energies that we uh, speak to on a personal level to say, I need some help for my inspiration or I need a creative idea or all of these things that are on scene. That's the part that we say, we thank you for that because right today we ask these entities, these energies to open our minds as individuals so that we can um, just observe and get a feeling for 
how um, other philosophies are working and how that we can blend that with what we already know to be able to help the children that is um, going to be receiving these informations and the, the, this kind of understanding. So to these energies, we say greetings, love and respect, and we really appreciate um, being part of that and, and being part of that development. So to these protectors, to these entities, we say uh, thank you very much for being part of us. And then on, I don't know if the screen is up right now, there's a, a word across the top there and it says, got such not so go so yeah. And what that means is if we look at those, all of those um, entities in the sky world, they're all connected as well. And it's kind of like all of this, this is pure energy. And it's described in many different ways. It's described as light, pure light. It's described as pure energy. And it's also personified, so there's many different names attached to what this great intelligent energy is and how it operates. And so we understand that we're directly connected to that because that's where our energies come from. That's where our creativity is. That's where our intelligence is. And that's how we um, come up with these new ideas when new ideas are required. And so to this energy, we say we know that we are part of this and we respect everything that's been put into motion, everything that was put into motion here on Earth and everything that was in the sky world. And so today we say to this energy, this great intelligent energy, thank you for this opportunity to uh, being part of both this energy and this material world to uh, expand our knowledge as well as to who we're to be and how we're to be in that way. And so th that was those were the words that were given and that that's the importance of those first words. So and that a little bit explains of what our relationship is um, with everything. Everything, in fact, is alive. And because we're a diverse people as original people, um, what I'll be explaining today is I'll be explaining how uh, it's called Rodino Shunido or Hodnishoni that you may have heard of. It's the most collective term for other words like Iroquois and the five original nations that brought into effect what's called a uh, great law, which is our constitution. And the our creation story is going to be blended in here as well, because this uh, when we when we do these acknowledgements, the, the acknowledgement is more than simply an acknowledgement. That's part of it. And that's only the that's only the truth part. The 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 motivation part or the part that's really important is what we do with this information. In other words, where we've received information. And when we receive the information, it puts into motion uh, a responsibility. And that responsibility is to be a part of this. So if we're to be a part of this great intelligent energy, understanding how this energy has its own natural way of going about doing things. And these opening words, give us a, uh, a bit of a picture into its operation so that we can unlock those keys of energy to in fact enhance our life journey here on earth. 
So when we're keeping all of these connections in mind, keeping in mind that all of this, and this is the reason why we use the term our protectors, <coughs> our, our relatives, our, our connections, because everything is in fact relative, a relative. They are part of us. As we are part of them, they are part of us. And we have to realize that that's a profound connection. We can't undo that. We can ignore it, but we can't undo it. When we are acknowledging, that opens up this door of responsibility that flows over, and then we can take it piece by piece and say, how does this benefit? to us and what is this ancient knowledge that existed still exists how is it relevant in the world today and so as we're going through this or shall i say before we go through this before i explain more of this intelligent energy i want to just play um a little bit from a, <coughs> a group that's um um, we're related, they're um, Lakota. Um, it's a, a group, and it's on YouTube, and it's called the Star People. And I'm going to play the beginning of it just before they do a song. And remember, this is um, all the same message that we're trying to extract. It's as if original people across this continent and across other continents as well, we share a profound philosophy that is spoken of with different words. So this um, uh, slide that's coming up next is just that preamble to say, this is how they talk about it in Dene land or um, where the, how the Lakota people talk about it. So I'm just going to play that slide right now, and then we'll get into the Haudenosaunee understanding and explanation. So if I click that screen, it should work. Is it coming up? I'm not getting a... I'm not getting any movement on my screen. Am I on? Yep, it could be. Um, is it frozen on your end? Yeah, it's just not. I mean, my mouse is moving, but it's just not turning uh, the, uh, the slide over. Uh, you could try. Um, Closing it and opening it up again. Okay. Let's see if I can escape here. Oh, maybe here we go. Grandfather just told me, he said, Grandson, the world is filled with people. There's only a handful of human beings. And at night when I look at the stars, I think of my elders, my ancestors. My grandfather said, I hope that I conducted my life in such a manner that you yourself would choose to be a human being and encourage and make a stand for our unborn of all nationalities. I never forget the day that my grandfather passed on or began a new journey. He told me, he said, grandson, we have no work but goodbye because life is forever. He said, don't worry, I'll see you again. So he says to me, he says, Trakoja, 
Uttam Shalakya, which means I shall see you again. And from each and every one of us here in Brule, we say to you, Duksha Akya, and many safe travels to wherever it is that you go. The journey back to Lord Rule has been one of um, unimaginable wealth. To this day, it has been impossible for me to totally capture the journey in simple words. But I will continue to pull upon this gift of music to carry the message and the hope that all of us someday can drop the barriers and drop the boundaries. My new Lakota family gave me the greatest gift of all. A very simple philosophy summed up in two very concise and succinct words. I'll share them with you tonight in hopes that you can remember them, carry them with you. Mitako Yasi, Mitako Yasi, translated, it simply means we are all related. One heart and one mind and one body. So, and when we're talking about these words, this is the importance of this relationship, is understanding our relationships with our relatives. And so remember when I'm saying relatives, I'm talking about all of these other things that are alive. And it, <clears throat> like the water is alive, well, Water is full of life. So the, the slide there has got the water in the background, and it's a really, really important part of our life. I mean, our life, the blood in our body is like the majority of our body is made up of water. And so this opening address we do this and remind ourselves any time that we gather that these are the important principles that we want to lay down we want to leave behind us those things that disturb us on an everyday walk so in other words we have some worries we have some concerns and say so when we go through this door that we leave those at the door and we just listen to these words because these words have the effect of bringing our hearts and our minds together. And when we do that, then we enhance the outcome. So we're also reminded that this comes to us from a source of pure positive energy. That's what we're talking about when we talk about this intelligent energy that is around us. And so this energy is within us as well. In other words, we have those connections. And many, many people have forgotten those connections, uh, have left behind their ancient ways and so today we need I think more re reminding and a greater reminder as to if we're going to be able to survive here on earth paying more attention to how we go about doing that and so we need to focus our attention and when we're doing this together this will in fact um, change how things come about. When we're thinking these things together, when we're in agreement, our energy becomes that much more powerful. In the next uh, slide, it says that <clears throat> in our original languages, this energy 
is described as this great intelligent energy. And this energy uh, prior to uh, the world being in existence the way we know it today, it existed in a different in a different way because it happened such a long, long time ago. So we know that what exists here on Earth and what exists in the cosmos is all related. And so this, we say that this is two thoughts. We have things that we can see or things that we can touch, which we understand being the material plane or the matter and the energy plane, which is the light. It's kind of like the um, entities in, in the sky world. Some of those stars, some of those suns um, are so far away that they may have already gone into supernova. They may have already um, dispersed their energy, but they're so far away that their light is still coming. That's how far away they are. So it that understanding of that little bit of science sort of helps us understand the, the power of it. And so, so that we understand as original people that this great intelligent energy, even though there was and still is, another land out there, another existence out there, uh, another world, if you will, which is different than ours, but similar in the sense that the beings there are made of this pure energy, so they don't have a physical body like we do. So that is the energy that we're talking about. And this energy, the way we understand it is it wished to expand its knowledge. So to be able to expand its knowledge, it took parts of itself. And so we can think of it as um, kind of like star dust. And where are those star dust particles? Because we're made of that energy. <clears throat> That's our thing a process. And we're made also of the energy, the, ener the energy of the earth, which is matter, which is the physicalness. So these two things work together. And so when we think about anything that's positive, and we put our mind together on that, this can bring these ideas into manifestation. It has that potential. And those are the keys that I'm talking about to understanding what it is that we're doing and why it is that we're doing this. So that's what brings it into the physical reality is through our thinking process. <clears throat> and the words of this address are drawn from what we call a great well of knowledge. And so this great well of knowledge is the sum collection of this intelligent energy that we have access to, that we have the, a way of reaching into this and pulling out those things that, that uh, benefit us in a way that opens our mind so that we can use these energies in a collective way for ourselves. And so I said that this was a benevolent uh, energy. So we have to personify this energy because the energy is kind of abstract, just thinking about pure energy because it's, uh, it's so simple that it becomes complex. And so we know that, that uh, we have the ability to think, or at least we think we think, and that thinking process is that abstraction because we can't really see the thinking, but we do believe that it goes on. And it's all those cells in our brain that 
these connections happen with. So if we think of the brain or the cells within the brain, just like the universe, if we look into the universe and these beautiful pictures that we'll see, um, lets us now see these physical entities as <clears throat> stars and galaxies and and we're even now able to take pictures of the wormhole. So all of these things are beautiful. <clears throat> and so this is where we're looking towards to be able to use this energy and to be able to understand what we're doing and how to uh, unlock these um, sort of like gems, um, gems of knowledge that allows us to prosper. So <clears throat> this is the, the teaching um, that we ha have. And so it has to do with the intention of this understanding of creation and as the words that come before all else. So, and once we've had our meeting, which we'll have today, I'll also say a few words to then close this so that we can take this as a package of understanding to the next step. First of all, I want to start off here with the uh, beginning. So this giving of thanks is known as that long word across the top. As And so what I've done here is I've taken this word apart as far as um, uh, content goes, so that each of the parts has a particular meaning, and it's how our uh, words go together. It's kind of like an English sentence. And this is important to understand the, uh, shall we say, literal translation to be able to um, understand that even though you might hear a dialogue that goes on in the language and then you hear the explanation, the explanation is like, you know, 10 times longer than, than the words that were actually spoken. It's because it contains all of this information in each of the words, of course, all in different combinations. So, um, the 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 K A is a, is a is a pronoun, and because it's a, um, a female pronoun, we say this is where the strength comes because we understand the female as being that central part of the fire, central part of the family um, that is like the mother, which is really the heart and it's natural. So <clears throat> the KA then also tells us that this here has been uh, put together or it's been created from something natural. So all of these things that we're talking about in the universe and on earth, they're all natural things. They were in existence before mankind was in the sense that he was made up of um, two things. So that's what that's talking about. Um, the next part of it is the uh, new, what Joe was talking about, that consciousness part or that thinking part. <clears throat> or if you want to talk about it in the sense of um, being the mind, which is more of a concrete thing, and cognition, how we understand things, how we um, have been. Um, condition to some degree of how we go about how we process this information. So it's all those um, things like reasoning to say it, it's kind of like an abstract. This <clears throat> opening is also part of the emotions. So the where, the W-E-R on the left, of your screen there. That comes from the word of awari, which means the heart, the heart of something. So <clears throat> this not only comes from our consciousness or our thinking process, 
also comes from our deepest emotions of love. And we're understanding that the love is one of the most, uh, one of the strongest uh, emotions that there are that there is um, next to respect. So when we're thinking in with our heart, we're actually allowing the universe to speak directly to us because that's the central part. The adun a t o n h part is the part that tells us that we're to do this so that other people can hear it. In other words, what we're doing is we're creating vibrations. We're uh, putting out this from our uh, from our heart, and we're doing it from our mind and our thinking process. We're saying it out loud. <clears throat> when we're talking um, in, in terms like this, when we're talking about the opening address, because everything in here is basically verb in a sense, it's all action. So we'd have to put a normalizer in, which is that T-S-H-E-R, that makes all of this thing on the above part of the screen into a noun. And the A at the end tells us that this, everything on the top is how this thing exists. So that, in a nutshell, is what the word says about what it is that we're doing. Uh, our very first thing that we talk about <clears throat> when we're doing the opening is we talk to and about the people and the importance of our relationships as people. We look at the people and we say, all of these people here are a variety. And the um, native word, ungwe sua, ungwe is the people, and the sua pluralized tells us more about what we're doing. That sua talks about the variety. So Every human being is unique. And just like all the blades of grass <clears throat> out in the lawn that I'm looking at right now. And, uh, you know, we don't need to be told that. That's how unique we are as individuals. We have our own uh, way of thinking. And so when we honor this ability that we're all thinking, sensing beings, that here we are, we appreciate those people that help us, all those wonderful people out there that <clears throat> surprise us with the wonderful things that they do, and the love that comes from many, many of, of these people to make our lives really a joy. And all of those people who help us out, like teachers, all of those people who are have our back, all of those people who are doing their thing as their life goal to try to enhance the lives of everybody else. Those are the people that we truly, truly admire and we send them energy from ourselves. So all of these things, we say this is the way we should be thinking about people all the time because of this variety. And because we understand here that the next part is how creation came into existence. See, this earth here, we call it our mother because all of the things that are necessary, going from the water, and the water and the life and so on, and then the life on top of the um, exposed lands, all of those things contribute to our well-being. And so this planet is, is, is our mother, and we can't live without her. So we totally give all our greetings and love and respect and all the things from our heart to say, is this wonderful the way that our mother, the earth, looks out after, 
<clears throat> looks out after us. And we encourage her to keep up her um, her responsibilities and to we totally honor that. And this is the way our minds are to be. On the earth, <clears throat> of course, we understand that there's this moisture, this waters we talk about. And so these waters are extremely important. As a matter of fact, it, this was the very first thing that uh, Sky Woman, who was a spirit being when she was uh, on her way to this planet, coming to this planet, this is the very first thing she saw. And it says that Anikne uh, Onega <clears throat> Iga, all there was was water. So this earth was completely uh, covered with water. And so uh, it was the water animals that were responsible in, in some ways, and all life actually that was here that saw Sky Woman coming down and sat her upon the um, back of turtle, or giant turtle, which we now know is North America. And then the waters were very, very responsible for that first life-giving force. All the, all the energy, well, not all the energy, but most of the energy that was there in the waters, we're saying that the waters also have this very, very special property. And even when we look at the um, uh, how science uh, looks at the waters, and it, the scientists even tell us that they don't think that <clears throat> water was the very first element here. It came from someplace else because it doesn't uh, follow the same rules of um, uh, physics that most things do. So in the, in the waters, everything, we're born in the water. And so that kind of mimics the, the, the cycle. So we are like, that's part of this earth. That's part of that mothering um, connection. And as I look at this particular sketch here, that those, those rivers going up there kind of look like umbilical cords to the other waters. So they're all connected quite from the sky, from the condensation that's in the sky, to the waters that are the ground, are absolutely beautiful connection. And there's also other connections <clears throat> to the sky world from the water. So the water is extremely, really important. Nothing on earth can live without the water. All the animals, all the plants, all the medicines, and it just goes on about even underground, there's, <clears throat> there's, there's waters. So when we think about the importance of the waters, that's what we give thanks for because those waters, in fact, do have a lot of personality and we um, do need to respect very, very much because of its great power. And this is how we wrap our minds around the waters. In the waters, <clears throat> we talk about the, then, the aquatic life. So the aquatic life is really amazing. Everything is connected to everything, just like outside of the waters. Everything is connected to everything, but the waters kind of help us understand just how connected it is. And so there's this uh, huge uh, variety of aquatic life. And so it goes from the tiniest of microbes to huge, huge fish. And there are so many varieties that we say that even though we don't know all of the varieties, we know that they're all important. We know that they're all connected. Now, how are they connected to the human being? <clears throat> well, the uh, many of these fish, we say, received a special um, request at creation time. As everything received its responsibilities, but it was 
what its purpose was. And so some of the responsibility of these fish were to be giving up their life so that we could have food on our plate, so that we could have sustenance. And that's a really, really, really special connection because isn't it wonderful? Isn't it precious that they give their life to us as human beings to then take that energy and it brings us that satisfaction to say that's the reason why we're giving thanks to the aquatic life because it all works together to help us to to have food and so when we're sending our energy to the aquatic life that aquatic life realizes it immediately and that's when it takes initiative to say <clears throat> it's working hard to 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 banish these illnesses that are in the water these days and so we say greetings love and respect and we really uh, love the aquatic life and this is the way our minds should be and so when we now <clears throat> come out of the waters and we look upon the land and um, this is starting to look like my lawn right now and got dandelions popping up all over and and the grass is is one of the things that we say are very very important too because generally speaking there's we don't know how many varieties millions of varieties of plants <clears throat> all of them all um, have received their responsibilities too and so when I look over on my um, um, lawn here I'm reminded that uh, it's time to get up there and uh, get those dandelions they, they they're delicious to eat and um, the leaves make good um, uh, good salads as a matter of fact the whole, the whole dandelion plant is is a beneficial plant and there are all of these other beneficial plants out there as well amongst the the grasses out there are nine out of ten of the medicine plants are um, all of the edibles, um, nine or ten of them are medicine. So um, if we were to be just doing our foraging um, and living in the season as, as, as the things go on, we've got all our sustenance is, is there and it's all free. All those ones out there, the um, special plants, well, the ones we say are medicine plants, um, some are the <clears throat> some are the roots, some of the stems, some of the leaves, some of the flowers, um, and there's medicines all over the place. So we say those ones um, in our area here. We say it's the uh, wild ginseng. That's the uh, the main one, and main one in the sense that it's the leader, and it has one of the uh, widest varieties of um, benefits to it. Now, it's good for just about anything. And so all of those medicine plants, we say special thanks to them because they provide us with everything that we need on a daily basis to be able to live a good life. All of those diseases that, um, that can come up, there's a solution to it with natural um, medicines because these medicines are alive and these things that, that um, cause us illness um, all of those all of those um, and germs all of those viruses all of those are alive as well so they're the living medicine and to me that's the you know, very very important thing and that's the reason why we give greetings love and respect to all of the grasses and um, this is the way our minds should be. <clears throat> we also talk about the insects, the insects that are flying about. And so, you know, all the um, uh, pollination that goes on that the insects uh, take care of, 
uh, I can't imagine doing that um, as as a human being to to pollinate every plant. I mean, the insect world is such an amazing um, world in the sense that some of these insects, many of them, are food for other animals. Um, even underground, and there's many insects there, and they each have responsibilities too. Some of them, the worms, they um, aerate the land. And so you would think about all the things that insect world is good for, we direct our energy there and we say we would really like to be sure that these in insect worlds uh, contain their own medicines, they contain their, their own ways of doing things, and these were the um, responsibilities that they received. And so we appreciate very, very much all the things that they do. And these, this is the way our minds should be. <clears throat> and also in the fields, we um, talk about what we're getting ready to at this time of the year, and that's to um, plant our crops for the, for the summer. And um, we say in this area here, we talk about uh, three, uh, related plants, uh, corn, beans, and squash. <clears throat> and there's a term now that's been around for maybe 100 years or so. Um, they say three sisters. And it's just um, kind of a not a totally accurate translation. In the language, it means three relatives. And the three relatives being corn, beans, and squash. So our traditional way of planting was in hills, so we didn't plow up the whole field. We would just <clears throat> alternate the hills at different times. Every year would be a different place we'd put a hill. And the corn would be in the middle of that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the corn, it requires a lot of um, nitrogen. And so the beans that's <clears throat> growing right next to the corn and the beans, they put um, nitrogen in the soil. <clears throat> and the, um, the climbing beans, they'll climb up the uh, stalk of the corn. So that's how they're related. That's their special relationship. <clears throat> and around the outside is where we plant our squash. And so the squash now has these nice big leaves. <clears throat> it uh, keeps the... Um, ground moist, and it also pre uh, prevents um, um, a lot of the um, weeds that uh, that grow up, so it, it's a minimal um, maintenance for, for growing. And we say even though we have many, many other types of plants, these are the main ones, these are our sustenance, and so we really um, uh, appreciate the fact that uh, we can rely on them and these plants require um, the women because it, um, as it's described in the language, it's the women who are sisters to the plants. And so it's the plants and our mothers, our women, that have that relationship. So they're sisters to each other <clears throat> and the plants are relatives to each other. And so to all of those plants that give us uh, sustenance, um, we give them great big love and uh, a great big hug and a cyber hug and all the rest of it to say thank you so much for doing what you're doing. And we really, really appreciate that. And we want you to continue your responsibility. So this is the reason um, we say this is how our minds are to be. And of course, um, it, it's not going to be that long. Sometimes even by the end of May, we can see uh, strawberries growing. And we say that the hanging plants or the hanging fruits, um, all of these ones 
and we say the ones that are the first is the strawberry. And the strawberry is also a medicine, and that's a woman's medicine. <clears throat> and so when the strawberry um, becomes ripe, that's also a medicine for us as well. And so we talk about the, uh, <clears throat> the benefit of that. We see it again. Um, there are prophecies that, that have been told, and they said there may come a day when we don't see um, the uh, fruit hanging on the tree. And so we know that that's also responsible, all be like the, um, um, the, uh, the ants the bees and that that do all the pollination if they don't if if they're not here to be able, or if they're not well to be able to do that pollination we won't see those plants so we really appreciate the fact that there's absolutely nothing like a fresh strawberry when it's been picked off the line it's just such a sweet sweet delicacy and so to all of these, and because the strawberries is the first, we say thank you, because that is now we can expect the whole summer we're going to see different kinds of um, fruits becoming ripe. And to them, we give them special greetings, love and respect. And this is how our minds are to be. And of course, we have the, um, the animals, and in our language, we have um, uh, <clears throat> categorized um, animals. And there's this one here. We say the, the ones that are in this category, we call Gundirio. And they're the ones that uh, provide us with the meat as well. So their flesh is what we say is um, their understanding and so when we uh, are giving greetings love and respect to the animals that that feed us that's um, that's their life that they're giving up for our benefit that was their understanding and so our understanding is also that <clears throat> that we know about this understanding and so not all animals fit into that category, but the deer we say is the big, the big one in this one in in our area um, because they're the main ones. And so this is our relationship with them, and it's so wonderful. Um, we're not to take the first one that we that we come across in our hunt. We're to send that to our relatives because our cousin. Um, is also out hunting, so he should take that one, and we'll take the next, the second one. So we give thanks for the animals that that do that duty, and this is how we respect them. So we say greetings, love, and respect because you continue to do your duty. And next, as we talk about the birds and the in the sky and <clears throat> we say the the main ones are the eagle and we say the eagle is the special one for us um, because uh, we respect the most because it this one flies the highest so we also we say the eagle is also our messenger because it can fly so high even and we say that that can take the message that we have here to the sky world. And so we say the eagle was chosen, metaphorically chosen, because it has such keen sight. And it also has a very, very powerful voice. <clears throat> and that was given for a reason. And so we say that on top of the great white pine, which um, peaks the, uh, the crest of the forest, is the highest tree. And on, on top of that tree is where the eagle sits. And 
we say that the ego responsibility is to see afar because it has such keen sight and, and to to be a, to, to be aware of any danger that that is near and to use its shrill voice to allow us to um, to be aware of this danger and so that's a metaphoric uh, relationship because we're also reminded of that's part of our responsibility as human beings too to be watching out for danger because each of us have that responsibility and not just the responsibility to be watching for the responsibility the the danger but to be in fact doing something about it warning in other words give the warning so that other people can be aware of this danger and then form the plan as to how to avert it so <clears throat> the birds that's that metaphoric um, symbolizing that we we appreciate the gesture that it stands for and of course here also are uh, many of the birds not all of them but some of them also are for um, for the taking so that some of them also give up their life so that we can have sustenance we use all the parts <clears throat> everything that we can possibly use you know when the claws <clears throat> um, will we'll take them and we'll make um, pendants out of them. And the feathers that we'll use to many, many different ways. And so nothing of anything that we take is to be ever taken uh, or to be discarded as being something that's not useful. We're to be constantly thinking about how we can use every everything because it's so precious and so to the birds we give greetings love and respect because they continue to do their duties and we really really appreciate that and this is the way our minds are to be and so here now we'll look at the trees yeah it's a <clears throat> very special time now we've already um, um, collected syrup from from the, the um, maple trees the one that you're looking at right now is in fact a, a maple tree and we say that the maple tree is the leader because it's the first one that we say that that sap is a sustenance and it's also a medicine and that's what we're supposed to drink um, in the springtime because of the winter it takes the toxins out of our <clears throat> out of our body and so that's that's the medicine and that cleans cleans our body up and getting all ready for the for the summer months and the planting season so um, we say that the trees are very very important um, as we're aware the uh, the leaves that gives us the oxygen that we breathe so literally um, the trees have so many uses. We use it to build all kinds of things with. Um, <clears throat> we make bowls with it. We make houses with it. Um, it's constantly giving us things. And not that long ago, we even used that to keep our houses warm. As a matter of fact, some people still do. And so all of these things that the trees are giving, they're continually giving their life. We you again we use all the parts we take that um, so even when that that tree um, uh, becomes old and falls over and dies that um, will rot on the floor of the forest and that becomes the fertilizer for other things to be going and if we take the tree and we we burn it and we use it to heat our homes and then what we have is leftovers we have the ashes this time the hardwood ashes and that's what we use to wash our corn with and so when we wash the corn with it then that 
takes all the starch out of the corn and that makes the very nutritious um, corn to be eating. And as again, that's one of the staples. So all of these things, and the smoke come, <clears throat> that comes up from that fire. <clears throat> so the smoke, um, the heat from the fire has warmed us. The ashes from the fire has uh, cured our corn. The smoke <clears throat> rises up into the into the atmosphere. Um, that mixes with the clouds and comes back down as fertilizer again. So it's just just um, amazing how all of these things are tied together. It's like a huge web. So to the trees, we give them special greetings, love, and respect because they continue to do their duties and and other duties as well. And many parts of the trees are also medicines. So thank you to the trees. Um, the next <clears throat> is we're looking at the um, uh, the winds here, the way the winds circulate. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we say that there's um, four um, circulating winds and there's lots of arrows on here, but basically when we say four circulating winds, we say that there's the north, the east, the west, and the south. Those are the four circulating winds. Each one of those winds brings a different kind of a weather. <clears throat> and um, we say that in the... Um, in, um, Right now, <clears throat> we've already had a certain kind of wind that came. Uh, that was the one responsible for the uh, maple trees to uh, put and <clears throat> put forth their their um, maple syrup, uh, the sap that we use to make maple syrup with. In the fall time, we have the um, other winds that come, and we say those other winds that come, they bring a blanket of white that covers our mother the earth and that allows the earth to regain strength as in this time where everything is waking up again and the roots are waking up the new things are starting to to grow again and so this is the time that that we thank the winds again that they brought these particular um, showers to us to bring the mayflowers and all that um, so of all the things that the, uh, the, the winds bring us, um, we say greetings, love, and respect because and it's all working together so that we can uh, never be bored with what the weather is going to be like. So thank you to those four winds. And this is the way our minds are to be. In the sky world also <clears throat> are what we call the thunder, the thunder beings. And we've already heard from the thunder beings. And um, we say that the uh, thunder has, um, <clears throat> it is very, very powerful. And we understand its, its power. It's also connected to creation. Um, and now, what's important now is that these um, thunder beings, they've received a certain kind of responsibility. The, the, the bolts that they send through the air, um, we understand to be, um, it cleans the air, it refreshes the air, it makes the air fresh again. And I understand now that there's scientific evidence of that <clears throat> as well, how, how it does that, but I haven't haven't really looked into that. But those um, thunderbolts also um, send energy into the earth because that energy then helps all of the roots to become alive again. It's their kind of spring wake up call to, to it shakes the earth a little bit so that <clears throat> they can take that energy and then um, transform it into something else and we say certain trees that any any tree actually that gets hit by lightning <clears throat> becomes that that tree is never the same and that tree would then be used 
in a number of other ceremonies because it has been um, had that a special contact with the energy being uh, the lightning. And so um, there's many, many things that uh, uh, lightning does. And we say that this being such a powerful force that we wish that this force be on our side at all times because of its great strength. So to these beings, we say greetings, love and respect. And oh, they're also responsible for keeping the, um, the terrible beasts under the ground. And um, <clears throat> maybe I'll leave that explanation about the, the dinosaurs for later because it's kind of related to what's going on um, these days with um, illnesses that we haven't heard of before. And what the, um, what the uh, thunder beings can do to, to um, uh, help us with that. So we give greetings, love and respect to the thunder beings. And this is how our minds are to be. Our greatest joy, of course, or one of our greatest joys anyways, we talk about our eldest brother, the sun. And the sun is so important because any, if we were a little bit, if the earth was closer to the sun, we would, we would burn up if it was 50 miles closer. If we were 50 miles further away, we'd freeze. And so <clears throat> this is pretty amazing that it's at exactly at the right distance to make life habitable here on Earth. And we say that the sun is our eldest brother. And we say, and it means that he's the great warrior. And he's the great warrior because he's so consistent that he constantly brings us um, the, the life force that we need. We need that. And vitamin D from the sun for our our own human bodies. And we say in the morning when that sun rays goes out, you know, sun rays goes out, <clears throat> just like you would outstretch you put your hand in front of your um, <clears throat> and reach out and stretch out your fingers. And each one of those fingers is a ray of light. That's our brother the sun reaching out from his reliable place beyond the horizon in the morning and that light enters to where we are and it wraps us up in the love that's being put forth so those fingers are the fingers of love coming to us and wrapping us up and the course of the sun is so reliable. We say that's what our our young men and our older men as well. That's their that's their that's their hero. And to say men should be just like the sun, totally reliable, totally trustworthy, totally giving everything of its energy for the benefit of everyone else. And so that is the reason why we call him our eldest brother, because he is the one that looks out for us and brings us the daylight and brings us the heat and brings us everything that <laughs> causes the photosynthesis and the grass to turn green. And so this is how we view our relative, our eldest brother, the sun, and greetings, love and respect. And we um, totally appreciate the energy that's being given to us. And this is the way our minds should be. In partnership with the daytime sun is what we call the nighttime sun or the moon. And we call the moon our grandmother. And there's um, there's tellings about how that came to be. And I understand even now that um, science even says that 
the moon was once part of the earth and broke away and our tellings or our ways of understanding also tell us the same thing and this became our grandmother because of the pull that she has over the waters that's where it shows the most and so we talk about our women and we respectfully speak about them in terms of motherhood all our women are the ones that we respectfully call mother and so we call them mother because they're in partnership with the moon and this is the the, um, the tide it's the pull that every 28 days that she exerts to her children her grandchildren are all all are all our mothers that, that work together so that we can see that we will have um, the coming faces the, the one the faces that are not here yet and the ones who are just arrived are such um, bright little um, pieces of joy and so that's that continuation and so grandmother the moon is the inspiration and the and more than inspiration for our our mothers to be a part of that to work together with that so that together we say that the moon and the sun are our relatives and when we see them in the sky at the same time we say oh look um they're visiting each other so we say greetings love and respect to our mother the moon and this is how our minds are to be in the sky world of course uh, um we've just like we didn't see the uh, the sky nights um we've had at least a lot of clouds where where, where i am anyway i wasn't able to see all the activity in the sky world but all of those entities out there are there for a purpose and they have their own intelligence and we are connected to them because it's we say beyond those stars is our place of origin where our energy part of our humanness is made up of and so we are we are the stardust we're those particles that were were sent out to come to to earth and experience a place of uh, materialness a place of matter and energy being part of one and we were given understanding too that this wouldn't be a long a journey this would be a short journey where that energy and the matter are together and a day will come when that energy then leaves and goes back to its origin so instead of <clears throat> just coming from the sky that's basically where we're going back to we're going back um, when our energy has separated from the uh, material and that material goes back to the earth and the energy goes back to its origin to take back the um, information because we're here on an information gathering to be able to take back that things those things that we have experienced here on earth um back to the sky world when it's our time to do that so to these stars we say the milky way is the pathway and so there were so many that have traveled this path already that we say that it's left that that um, trail across the sky world because that's where our uh, all our grandmothers and grandfathers all our relatives that have been here and left that's where they're all living and so that's our relationships to the stars and we thank the stars for all that they do and the influence that they are in our life
And this is the way our minds are to be. And towards the end, um, <clears throat> we're almost complete here. Um, it's hard to um, define what these ones we call our protectors. And so this image is just sort of like a cloud formation that sort of gives us a, that idea that that's pure energy. This is a purely benevolent energy that helps this intelligent energy. They're, it all works together <clears throat> and there are smaller parts of it. So these parts of it, we, we say these beneficial energies are our guardians, are our protectors. And they're the ones that can come to us um, when, when we call them. And it's just a matter of um, being in alignment with them to know that they exist and to know that we can call on them. These are the ones that are responsible for that we go to when we have some calamity or when we're in a state of real distress or there's some great depression <clears throat> that's um, come to us or some great sorrow that comes to us to lift our spirits out of that. This is the energy that that we go to to help us deal with those situations. Also in situations where we don't know what to do. And sometimes we look at, in English they say problems. In our language we say we have a concern. So when we're really troubled over a concern and we don't know what to do, um, a state of worry uh, comes in. And so we say, so we don't worry about these things. We are to then tell uh, these entities, our protectors, say, we need some help right now. <clears throat> and I don't know what the answer is. So if I give it to you, <clears throat> Just whenever you're ready to give me the answer as to what needs to be done in this situation, then I don't have to um, stress myself. I've lifted that burden. Um, and that's that mental health part of it, <clears throat> how we're to go about doing this. And there's more, more to it, but I can't explain it, everything at, at the same time. So just understand that that's, that's there. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me that's there and needs to be um, our intellect, our intuition can be enhanced because we're all given the answers um, and we have the answers. It's just reaching into it and making it clear for us because we say, no, nah, that can't be the answer, but you should try it out. You should go with, you know, we talk about feelings, um, we talk about sensations, people talk about uh, uh, your gut feeling. All of those things are the things that tell you that this is a real connection, it's really there. <clears throat> and we have that ability to enhance that. So to them, um, I ask today that they, they open up our mind and to take back this new information or this information that um, we can relate to other things with in an enhanced way. And so that was what I had asked them. And I truly hope that um, that is being felt by everyone. And so to them, we say greetings, love and respect. And uh, this is how our minds are to be. And the last, of course, is uh, much like that screen that I showed you right at the beginning. <clears throat> uh, this is the intelligence. This is kind of looking into our mind to say all of those stars are kind of like our brain cells. And the energy that connects them is that synaptic gap that we know exists um, because thoughts being uh, real. And so when we have these thoughts, everything that we send our thoughts to, uh, we're instantly connected. 
faster than the speed of light. So that's the power of this opening address, and that's the reason why it's so, so important. So uh, <clears throat> the next slide, I think, is back to that um, um, that group <clears throat> <clears throat> that I had put up on earlier, and it's uh, the song that follows. It's a really fun song, and um, I need to go out for uh, a minute or two to get a drink and clear my throat. And so if I say, well, I'll put that one on and say in five minutes, we'll come back. OK, so we'll go on to the next slide.
Uh, Dea Hyundai, is, is this the, yep. are you finished with the screen share at this point? Yes, please. Okay, so you can, um, at that, um, the same button that you use to share your screen, um, it should also allow you to stop sharing your screen. There we go. Great, and if um, you want to do those closing words. <clears throat> yeah, I was just wondering, is there, a, is there going to be a question period or? Sure, if some people, if anybody has a question and you want to put it in the text box, um, I do just so everybody's uh, aware, um, we are a little past time, but that's okay. Um, if people need to go, that's fine. Um, but if not, 
there's an opportunity here if you have any questions, if you want to put those in the chat and we can moderate those. <clears throat> so we'll just leave a, a, a minute or two to allow for that to happen. And if not, then we will uh, close up the session. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> So it doesn't appear that there's any questions at this time, but um, I'm actually going to uh, call on my friend and mentor who's here, uh, Troy Miracle, to he has a he has a few words um, to share that I've asked him to share as well. So Troy, if you want to pop on. Can everybody hear me OK? Yes. Yep. OK. Well, first of all, Nyao Goa, uh, Dale Hyundai, and I think I speak for a lot of people and just quickly looking at the chats to see if there was any questions coming in. But, you know, a lot of people are are inspired by the words that you, you, you've shared today. And, and for me, the opening, you know, I, I fear sometimes that it's becoming uh, something like a land acknowledgement that people are kind of um, going through quickly sometimes to open it in a good way. But when we stop and pause and we truly understand the meanings behind everything, when, when we take that time, it makes it so, so important. And, you know, for me, arguably, this is the most important ceremony or, or teaching that we have. And that's why these are the words that come before all others. So, it's it's grounding um it, it, it it's so grounding and it teaches us our responsibility it, it reminds us of of why respect is so important in our in our culture and why we need to continue to live live by those words of of love and respect in everything that we do in our relationships with not only each other but with the land and all of the things of creation because we really truly are the least important thing and are so dependent on everything else so so your words and and your explanations and teachings around each one of those components is is really really uh resonating with me because there was a few things that you shared that i hadn't heard of or thought of before so um, you know, I'm so appreciative of it and, and I'm envious too in the, in the sense that I can't understand all of the words in Mohawk and how truly uh, meaningful those probably are. Uh, my son was sitting here listening uh, to it with me and, and he said, Dad, you know, Mohawk words are so much longer than Anishinaabe words. And when you went through the one the one piece and why that one word and how it means so much. I said, well, see, now you know. <laughs> so, um, you know, we had some young people listening today, too, that were, were as appreciative as as the adults. So, again, y'all go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice, <clears throat> nice talking to you again. Thank you yeah. for the comments. Huh. So it appears that there um, is a question in the chat box. Uh, Priya, maybe you can, I didn't, I can't see it for some reason on my screen. Um, Priya, do you wanna? Yeah, hello, can you guys hear me? Sorry. Yes. Dehande, can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Uh, the question was, can you describe the traditional word you use for darkness or black? <clears throat> um, 
Yeah, it's Gahunji. Um, <clears throat> the it's not really black. It's I'd say probably if anybody's familiar with uh, Flint, how dark it can get. It's almost a black. It's a really dark um, color, <clears throat> and it's a verb. So that would be the word. What other um, we have? The darkness is also depression. Um, and we have another word, and we just say it's the great black. <clears throat> but that would be the uh, sort of paraphrased word. Um, but the great darkness, um, we say, is Asundawe Goa. That's when somebody. Um, goes into a place of non-feeling. In other words, they get so um, depressed that they, they, they're not here. They, they're not hearing. They're not able to really understand anything. And they have difficulty speaking. And it's a very, very dangerous place to be. And so we have um, ceremonies that bring the fire back. And we say bring the fire back because um, it's connected to the stars. That um, that spark, that's the star. And even in our language, it says that um, that spark has been placed in us that gives the body the heat. So if that if that spark leaves. The body goes cold, and that's the that's the danger. So we're reminded on there's many other things connected to that as to how to bring back that, how to bring back that spark. And one of those are the protectors. That's part of that, and the connections that we have to all living things is um, we're turning our back on creation when we get into those states it's kind of like we're not aware that we're connected and so that that black has uh, all of those kind of shades of the rainbow in it even though you can't see it it it, <clears throat> it shines differently Thank you, Day Hyundai. That was beautiful. Um, the next question in the the chat box here is: How can we as educators present this knowledge to our students so they understand the why behind the land acknowledgement? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I would say as many times as you need to listen to this uh, podcast to say, <clears throat> that's what it that's what it looks like when we say it and. We need to internalize this, internalize it and say, hey, what is your relationship to the people? <clears throat> is it good or is it bad? And what is it going to take to improve it? What is your relationship to Mother Earth? Is it good? Is it bad? Does it need improvement? All of those things go each, through each one of them. And we do know we, we were given a, a free um, mind when we were put together as people. So we know um, what's right and what's wrong. We just need to remind ourselves as to how do we strengthen those positive things in each one of those and more. I mean, we could talk about this all day and come up with different things, but the that's, that's how you can teach it. You teach it from yourself. <clears throat> what's it inside of you? Does that help? That's a beautiful response, Daya Hyundai. I think at this time, there's there's so many positive comments here um, and so many uh, so much gratitude. So thank you. Uh, I think at this time we can move to the your closing comments. OK. <clears throat> OK, so what do you want to see you? Scott, you got a question. Nails in the hotels and what got one in there, you know, you know, 
Nay, I do what any more I don't say. Menori, what go with an old day, and what got one got to Johan Jade. Nenzi, you know, when you got our seat, that comes a raco. Negative to net no one, I got you again and what Nigora. Dunda eighteen, what I do, what you got going. Tight to need to hang any more, Nigora. Nenua, Nenzi, Karum Yade. No one want to hear that day, died in what I do say. Sinis, what got one. Did Karma Yad, Sidua Tiros can get that gold host for Tedum? It is such a stone neck when it rages. A wagon you just stock quadonia. It to go in it no what did you know what I do? Then as you need the Aguago Scarney, do you want a wagon? Tie it to need to hang any more and go over. Nena Ona Ne the young key ad. Then as you need to what it is what they can say. Negative ne. I'm the you swat out there, and it's you in what I mean. No good eight to eight, no, what did you know? I don't take to new tongue and what you go over. Some guy at this is you know, then some got got warning. It got in eight, no, that said one of what I do, you go here to go to Joan Jardine, only sit carrying yard. They took an inning to again, and a one you go over. And dog at ten and hold eight, I got daddy oak, that say, easy give away, so I had that songs what got away, you go know what I do, sir. So again, at this time, now that we're at the place where our minds will go in separate directions, so we again, we bring ourselves to this great well of knowledge that exists for us, and we dip into that. <clears throat> and it was asked that we rely on our intuition to shine a bright light on the pathway that we lead and so that to all those things that are here on earth that we see and feel and uh, somehow interact with we say thank you to all of these things again because this is what we opened ourselves up our minds and our hearts to do and this is the way our minds are to be. In the sky world, we say again to all of these entities, right from the thunder beings, right through back up to the stars and all the things in the heavens and the clouds and things that we even don't understand. We say thank you that you're all in place and still doing what you were given instruction to do. And what is our place? in this relationship. And so we say thank you again that you continue to do those duties. And this is the way our minds are to be. And to those ones we call our protectors, we thank you that you have opened up our mind. And hopefully that if we have to travel someplace, we say that if that has to happen right now, then that we be taken there safely and that we return safely. And so to the other things that we asked for, we opened that, we asked that our minds be opened up and we truly believe that we have absorbed some new truth to take with us and to share because that was the understanding that we received this knowledge with is to be able to share it. And so this is the way our minds are to be into creation everything what it was all these energies coming together to show us and to wake us up again of what we've seen what we've heard and what we speak we say enhance all of those things for the benefit everyone and all our relations and so today if there's anything that I've, I've left out then I leave that to you to give your thanks for the things that I've left out and those were the words that were given today dieto thank you again from all of us uh, for spending this time with us today and sharing um, all of these beautiful words. 
Uh, just a reminder, so it, <clears throat> it looks like for some people the chat box isn't working. Um, some people can see posts and others can't. So we do have a feedback link uh, that we will send through email. Uh, this is, as I mentioned earlier, this is our last webinar for the month of April. And your feedback is important because it helps us in planning um, what is going to be for uh, the next coming months uh, to help support you in your classroom practice. And so I just want to thank Priya for moderating and again, Dea Hande for taking the time out today and spending that with mm -hmm. us. And to all of you for taking the time as well to be part of today's um, webinar. And I wish you um, well on the rest of your day. Uh, be safe, stay, stay well and stay connected. So have a great day, everyone. We'll see you on email. Yo. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.